I'm so excited to be able to talk with you today. I feel so honored that I was asked to take account of what God has done in my life. I actually think we should all do that. Find some time when the kids are sleeping, when you have a moment alone, I know they're rare, but take the time and write down what God has done in your life, your testimony, your story, when you met the Lord, and then share it with someone. I actually haven't done this in a really long time, and it was eye-opening, and I loved it, and I'm so excited to share. Um, but before we get into sharing my story, a small part of it, and before I share a little bit of scripture, I wanted to pray with you and prepare our hearts for what you're gonna hear. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our time together today. Thank you for meeting us here, Lord. I ask God that I would be your vessel and that you would speak through me and that you could meet the women where they are today. We are so grateful for this time. In your name, amen. Okay, I hope you guys are left encouraged after all of this. I'm gonna use my phone so that I don't forget what I'm saying and I hope that it meets you where you are. Okay, so let's start from the beginning so you can see how much God can do by simple obedience. When I was two years old, my mom and I lived in an apartment and we shared a wall with another single mom who was a Christian. She would say hi to my mom occasionally and I honestly can't imagine the things that she saw during that time. But instead of judgment, instead of this woman judging my mom, she decided to share Jesus Christ with her and to share the gospel. My mom at the time was a drug addict, abused alcohol, and was in a relationship with another woman. That did not stop Jamie from telling her about God. The moment my mom heard the good news, she turned away from all those things, flushed her drugs down the toilet, and has been sober ever since. I've heard my mom tell her story literally to everyone and it gives me chills every single time still today because that is the power of God. I wish I could say that since that moment my life was perfect, but that's just not the case. John 16:33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. And there's a period right there. <laughs> a period that shows you that let's just make a point there will be trouble in this world we live in our sinful earthly bodies so that makes sense even though there is a period there that's not where the verse ended you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world we all have experienced pain shame and sin and regrets but god doesn't leave you there god is honest but he's also hopeful and holy he offers us so so much my mom is one of the closest people to God that I've ever met, but she was married to my dad who was an unbeliever and an addict for most of my childhood, and that created a lot of conflict and painful dysfunction. I grew up with a father that rejected me and made me doubt if I was even worth loving. That's something no child should ever have to feel. I felt the deepest pains and lowest of lows, constant manipulation, constant worry and anxiety, but even in that, I remember feeling God's presence. I remember God telling me he was my father. He was my earthly father and he was my heavenly father. It's something that I believed but never fully understood until recently. It's easy to get stuck in all that I lost, but God never let me stay there because today I can see how God has protected me from so much. When I was 14, my mom moved us away from our toxic environment and I was so confused and had a little rebellious stage. I remember my mom constantly praying for me and telling me at an annoying rate how God had a plan over my life. I didn't know anyone in this new place, so I sought validation from boys and friends and I was inches away from my story being completely different. And my mom found us a church and she forced me to go to youth group. And not only did she force me to go to youth group, but she sat directly behind me. She would like tap me on my shoulder to remind me that she was watching me during church. And even though it was kind of aggressive parenting, it actually worked because during that time, I felt a clear tug from God. A few months later in high school, I met my husband there 
and his love for Christ was evident and was the most attractive thing about him, besides his dreamy eyes, of course. When God told me he was my father, I didn't quite realize that meant he had this life on the other side of it all. I never dreamt about getting married or having kids because I was really busy helping raise my own siblings. God has given me more than I could ever imagine by first giving me salvation through Christ, second giving me a man that has loved me for half my life and has never left. He's given me three children that have healed me every day since. Okay, so let's talk about who you are in this story and how God can challenge you today. Who do you relate to the most? Who do you identify with? I wish I could sit with each of you and hear your stories individually. Seriously, I wish I could just hear everything that God has done in your life. I would literally thrive off of that. Maybe you're more like my mom and have struggled with addiction, codependency, or loving someone that can't quite love you the way that they should. Maybe you're inspired by the woman that shared God with my mom. Be the Jamie. If she would have looked at my mom, judged her, and assumed she didn't need God, or that she was too far gone, I probably wouldn't be here today. It's not our job to choose who gets to hear about Christ and salvation. It's our job to obey and spread the gospel. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In doing that, you will find peace and possibly a lifelong friend like my mom found in Jamie. Maybe you identify with my story the most. Maybe you've had a really rough childhood and even though you love Christ, you feel lost at times or that you can't get past what someone has done to you or can't get past what they didn't do. I've been there. I have to fight myself from parenting how I wanted to be parented as a child and parent my children from a place of healing, not a place of pain. It takes time, prayer, and counseling. Regardless of who you identify with, I want to offer some insight to ways that can direct you to closeness to God, regardless of circumstances or your past. When I was 18 years old, I spent a year in discipleship. Even though it was intense, it was very life-changing. Today as a mom of three, and with way less time, I've been thinking of a way to do something similar, so I'm going to share a part of what I think we all need and what can help. Depending on your walk with God, I want you to find a more seasoned mom that you, that has older kids, that is married, and that you feel like has a closeness to God. Ask her if she can meet with you once a month to give you wise counsel. Buy her a cup of coffee. Take her out to dinner and glean what you can from her. Now you find a newer mom than you and take her under your wing. You might be thinking, oh, I'm too busy or I don't need to do anything like that or I won't get anything from that. Trust me when I say you will probably get the most out of that scenario. Get out of your own way and help someone else. Dedicate a year to that funnel mentality of someone pouring into you and you pouring into someone else. I've been using this same formula for the past 12 years and it's kept me focused and close to God. New moms, your child is the closest thing to heaven right now. There is enough wonder and splendor in that. Enjoy it. For us more seasoned moms that are constantly saying how tired we are because of these kids, I hear you, I am you. However, we cannot shift all responsibility of our lack of intensity with Christ on the existence of our children. Ladies, I know that was a lot, and I know it was fast, I know it was intense, but I hope it showed you how valuable you are in Christ, how much he loves you, and how he can use anyone, including you.